So you've got a camera, you've done your research, you know a couple little techniques, and you're ready to start booking clients and making money, which is probably the hardest part of the entire process of running a product photography business. But today I'm gonna show you how to scale your business from zero to 100. And when I say 100, I mean a fully booked calendar in less than six months. I myself have not been doing product photography for a full year yet, and my business is way beyond anything I could have ever imagined. And like you, once upon a time, I was sitting behind a computer trying to do research, trying to figure out how to get gigs, how to get clients, and I felt like it was kind of working, but nothing was taking off. And I had to think outside of the box if I wanted to make a name for myself and push myself in an industry that is becoming quite saturated. And I'm gonna share all of my secrets with you today. So in order to book clients, the first thing you have to do is show them a portfolio, which I know you're thinking, hey Brittany, I'm starting out and I don't have a portfolio. Well, neither did I. And before I begin, let me preface, I don't condone doing this because it's not good, but this is what I did. I went to TJ Maxx. I spent like two or $300, bought a bunch of products, came home. That same day I took pictures of all the products and then I returned everything the next day. But I got a whole portfolio. I got to pick which cute products I wanted to use. This same technique can be applied with products around your house. Do you wanna get into food photography? Do you wanna get into product photography? You have those things lying around. Find your favorite products, clean them up a little bit cause you don't want them to look dirty and take some cute pictures. Use curtains in your house, use blankets, use various things you have as props. In the beginning, you're gonna be very limited. Here's some pictures I did in the beginning and here's some pictures I'm doing now. You don't have props. You do not have the budget to go buy props and you don't have a huge prop collection. So your pictures are gonna be minimalistic and that is the theme that you're gonna to wanna to stick to when you first start to get the hang of it, to get booking some clients. And if you decide you like things to be a bit more magical and creative, then you can start to expand your collection. Once you have the basics down, you have a portfolio and you have some clients under your belt. That's when it's time to, okay, let me branch off and try to be a bit more unique or have something that is specific to me. But to begin with, just focus on making a simple portfolio study how to use shadows and how to use lighting. Those are the two things you're gonna to wanna to learn when you're first starting out, because that's how you're gonna get those crisp, clean images. It doesn't matter what your camera is. If you know how to manipulate light, that is what's gonna give you that sharper image quality. In the beginning, I, of course, didn't have a huge prop collection, like I said. So what I had to do was rely on Photoshop for a lot of my creativity. I didn't have anything to reflect light, bounce light. I had these two cheap little lights. So I really had to learn how to compensate for lack of equipment and lack of material and props through the editing room, which now is paying off for me because the editing is what is making my picture stand out so much against my competitors. So the biggest key here is to focus on Photoshop, Lightroom, and editing. If you don't have the equipment and you cannot afford at this moment to go upgrade, make sure your editing is A1. <laughs> that is my best recommendation. So now you've taken some products around your house, or you did what I did and went to the store, and you have a portfolio. In this portfolio, just like everyone says, it is so important that you know who it is you are targeting. When I was starting out, I didn't know that I wanted to do product photography. I knew I wanted to take pictures of things, but I didn't know what things I wanted. So I got friends and family together. I did some photo shoots with people and uh, I live in Florida. It's hot outside. I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would. It was kind of miserable. I started in the middle of summer, so it was not my forte. I went into real estate photography and uh, it's a lot of work and not a lot of money. And then I saw something on the internet that said you should put yourself out there, reach out to companies. So I drove to every single coffee shop in my vicinity, just told them I was a product photographer. I was offering free services because I'm trying to build my portfolio. One of them let me take pictures of their stuff and the pictures came out gorgeous. But now I have pictures of people and pictures of food. That's, that's not even the same category. If I wanna book a person, why would I send them pictures of a food portfolio? So you have to really think about what it is. If you're wanting to get into product photography, you can probably get away with doing a couple food shots in the beginning just to show that, hey, I have different lighting styles. I can get pictures look more dramatic. I can make them look softer. It's okay to kind of mix in a little bit of something in like cousin genres. So if you're in cosmetics, 
I would say food photography is like a cousin. It's still in the product photography kind of category. So it is okay in the beginning, but try to quickly get away from that and make your portfolio target towards your audience. Now, you have a portfolio. What do you do with it? Do you just put it on the internet? Because that's not gonna get anywhere. What I did was I went through Instagram and targeted micro businesses. Micro businesses are businesses that are just starting out. They don't have a lot of followers, just like you. They don't really have a big pocket to work with. So you're kind of on the same level. They'll probably give you a try and you can put some practice in, charge them cheap and just focus on building that clientele. You wanna get a good pricing strategy, which I'll talk about in just a minute. I made a list of all of these companies that I wanted to reach out to. I basically went on Instagram and I searched a term. I knew I wanted cosmetic photography. So I searched uh, cosmetics, makeup, skincare, and just go through the feed. It's not fun. You're gonna click on every picture that looks like it's a company until you come across a company. You wanna stick to companies that have less than 10,000 followers when you're starting out. Less than 5,000 is even better because when you get to companies that have a larger following, their value of pictures is gonna be different than the value someone who has 5,000 followers is looking for. They're on different levels and you shouldn't put yourself too far out there if you're not confident enough or ready enough because you don't know what your pricing is going to be. You don't know how to adjust to different styles and there's a lot that goes into it. So practice with the small dogs and then work your way up. When reaching out to these companies, I used to do DMs. People say stay away from DMs, but I find that if you're targeting smaller companies, DMs is usually the best way to get a hold of them because they don't have an efficient mailing system. So your messages could get lost sometimes. So just to be safe, I would DM and send an email to the same company, pretty much the same exact structure. And the way that email looked was, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm a product photographer. I came across your brand, your brand seems pretty dope. Say, give them a compliment about something specific to their brand to make them feel good. Cause it's kind of like, um, you gotta butter them up before you ask, I don't say for money, but before you throw your services at them, you wanna be nice and compliment them. Think of how many spam bots you get on Instagram in a day. Like there are a lot of people trying to sell stuff. So you first off, you wanna sound like a real person. You wanna sound genuine and you wanna sound like you mean business and you know what you're doing. And the best way to do that, like I said, is to DM and email, do both. Continuing on in that DM, you then go to tell them, I offer product photography services and I would love to do a discounted shoot for you. I'm trying to build my portfolio. I, that's a good way to reach out to them because then they're more sympathetic. They kind of understand that you're not gonna charge them a bunch of money, which makes them happy. You don't have to say you're starting out, but that is what I did and it seemed to work for me. Also, you want to make sure you include your portfolio in that message. If you look on my Instagram account, you'll see that I do bundles of pictures. So I kind of pick my favorite pictures from a shoot and put them in like a little graphic. If you could bundle different graphics together to kind of show different themes, to show like, look, I can do dark and moody, I can do light and airy, I can do fun and spunky. It just kind of tells a better story versus having everything on one page. It, it can look a little messy and a little cluttered. So try to package them. If you have enough pictures for it, send three snapshots that have five pictures of like different styles or if they're the same style, that's okay. Just make sure the story is being told nicely. So now you have that message sent. You have those pictures, you complimented them, you're asking for business. Now do that 30 more times. Yes, 30 times. I would try to email 25 to 30 clients in a day, potential clients in a day. I did this for a week straight and immediately my business took off. I'm not exaggerating. I didn't have to do this for months on end. I did email 30 companies for a week and then I would say probably two months in, I did it one more time. I spent one more day emailing 30 clients. And then after that, I was being fully booked. It was insane how quickly it happened. It's just that initial push you gotta give yourself. And you might feel a little overwhelmed, like if you have a ton of companies get back to you, that's great. Just make sure you schedule everything properly and those first set of clients you have go above and beyond for. You want to have that work continuing to cycle in because when you have the same client book you over and over and over again in the beginning, that is all content you can put on your Instagram, you can put on your portfolio, make a YouTube video out of, that's all organic content that you can use to get more leads from. So 
make sure you're doing everything you can to get that retention with your clients. I would always give people two to three extra images. Another trick you can do to make more money, this is genius trick, and I was so proud of myself for thinking of this. I had a company, and let's say they order 10 images. Well, I'll take those 10 images for them, but because I'm not busy and I'm not fully booked yet, I'll go ahead and take another 10 images for them, but I'll put a watermark over it, give them their first batch, and I'll be like, hey, I also made these 10 extra images you could buy if you want to. It didn't hurt you because you had the time because your business isn't built yet. You also have more stuff for your portfolio and now you have more stuff your client could buy. Give them two or three extra images for free to make them happy. Only in the beginning, but I recommend doing that as like a long-term thing. But doing that to be nice, get their trust, make them love you, and then, hey, I also have these you could buy. And who knows, you could make a couple extra hundred bucks on a project you weren't expecting that for. Now, when you get really busy, you don't really have time to take those extra images and like offer them to somebody. Like, hey, I also did these in case you wanted to buy them, you won't have time for that. But it's a great strategy in the beginning to get a couple extra bucks under your belt. So, your portfolio is made. You emailed, you DM'd probably a close to 100 different companies and 10 of them got back to you. Where do you go from there? They're asking you, yeah, what are your rates? What are your prices? There's a question no one wants to answer. When I was first starting out, I believe I was charging about $25 a picture, which may sound like a lot to you, but when you think about that, you have prop sourcing, styling, editing, that all takes time. I'm to a point now where some of my pictures can take two to three hours by themselves, one picture to edit. So $25 for one picture might sound nice, but if you're spending five hours on one picture and you're getting $25 for it, when you divide that to an hourly rate, it's really not that good. So my recommendation would be to maybe throw 25, 30 out there just for your first couple ones to see how you feel. I can't really give you an exact number for prices because all of my prices are custom quotes. Every project depends on how long it's gonna to take to do. Are the products reflective? Is it gonna take a lot of time in the editing room? Are we buying extra props? How are we bringing this to life? Is it gonna be magical, fantastic? Do I need to go spend $300 in props for just one picture? These are all things that have to be taken into account. But in the beginning, like I said, you don't have all the extra fluff. Your pictures are pretty cut and dry. So pick a price. Once you feel like you could increase, take a chance and increase. You have to think about what is it that you want in this moment? Do you want more clients in this moment? Do you want more money in this moment? Or do you wanna build your portfolio in this moment? These three factors are going to determine how you're going to price your business, how you're going to do price increases. These are all very important things to think about. In that pricing strategy, I do think it is beneficial, especially in the beginning, to do bundle packages. So you can do five images for X amount. However, if you do 10 images, I'll drop $5 off each price. You don't put it like that. You just kind of have, this is the price for five images. This is the price for 10 images. But the more you order, the price per image is cheaper. So say you order five images, it's $30 an image. But then if you order 10 images, it's $25 an image. You can adjust the difference accordingly. Like I said, this is really hard to do and talk about because all pricing is different, and that is a whole nother video I'll get into another day, but that is all I have to say on the pricing aspect. Pick a price, stick with it, figure it out what it is you're going to work on first, and then base your future pricing strategy off of that. Now, you've got a couple clients, you've got prices, you got money coming in, you're using all of these strategies, and you're starting to book, and it's exciting, and it is fun. My biggest piece of advice, I've probably said that term several times, listen, get your earwax, clean them ears, earwax, get those ear swabs, clean your ears out, sit tight, eyes on me. Are you looking at me? Because we need eye contact right now. Social media and online presence. I don't care what any photographer tells you, you need a website. If you're doing product photography, you need a friggin' website, man. Don't listen to what anyone has to tell you. You need a website, you need an Instagram. Those are two must haves for organic leads. Now I know you can run ads and you can make money and you could just st stick to reaching out to people, but your life is gonna be so much easier 
if all of your clients are always finding you. I don't ever have to reach out to a client to find somebody. Occasionally, if there's a brand I come across and I think I could do some killer photos, I'll message them. I'll be like, hey, I do product photography and your product excites me. Like, what do you think about working together? But that's only on a very rare occasion. It's probably only happened like two times just because I find a product that I think is amazing. But your website is a necessity, okay? Your website and money making go hand in hand. You want your portfolio to shine. You want your website to shine and the secret to getting bigger clients is the language you use and the presentation you give on your website. If your website is just a blank portfolio, that's nice, but how is a client gonna find you if you have no keywords on there? It's all about search engine optimization. Use key terms, use the word editing, use the word Photoshop, use the word product photography. Make sure these words are on your page because when people search for terms on Google, you want yours to come up in their searches. Have a page, have your best work showcased on there. As soon as they click on your page, you want their breath to stop. If someone looks at your website and goes, wow, that's a cool website. Regardless of the pictures, if the website is cool, it is only going to enhance the look of your photography. So remember that your website can be used to manipulate your images, not even not manipulate, to enhance your images, I guess you could say. You can check out my website below. The way I built my website was with Wix. I built it myself because I'm way too picky to have someone build it for me. I found five photographers that I just love their content. I opened their websites on five different browsers and then I built my website centered around the terms they're using, the style, the setup, the layout, and then I put my own twist on it to make it mine and unique. And that is one of the biggest secrets in photography or any industry is you don't need to reinvent the wheel, just take it and make it better. That is what I follow for social media, for Instagram, for YouTube videos. Just find what someone else is doing that's working and then make it work better <laughs> and you'll be set. So having that website is important. Having Instagram is also very important because that is where I get all of my leads from for the most part. Actually, like probably 95% of my clients find me while scrolling on Instagram. Use keywords, use trending tags. Think of things that someone would look for. Any site where you can share your stuff, very beneficial. But having a website, number one, and getting an Instagram, number two. It doesn't have to look beautiful at first, just make sure you have it. You need a page where it has all of your information. Someone can just go and click on it and you're right there. Your work is out in the world. So don't listen to anyone, get yourself a website. It is important. And my last tip is to show your personality, show yourself and show you. I've been doing live stream videos while I'm working, while I'm editing, while I'm photographing. And you can go on my Instagram now and you can see what my views are looking like on those videos. All organic, it's not paid for and it's crazy. I didn't think Instagram would be so beneficial to finding people, but whenever you're performing that task, like you're taking pictures of a product, if you live stream, that helps make you feel so much more relatable. People can actually see how much goes into a photo shoot, how much goes into editing, how passionate you really are, how detail oriented you are. So instead of just telling them like, yeah, I'm a good photographer and I'm detail oriented and I'm this and I'm that, show them. Show them in as many ways as possible who you are, why they should support your business. Aside from the fact that you're a bomb ass photographer, give them another reason to love you. So that is all the advice I think I have for this video. I really hope you found it helpful. I know that when I was starting out, I felt like a lot of people were repetitive in what they were saying. Like this person and this person said the same thing, but also said nothing at all at the same time. So I really hope you found value in this. This is a strategy that worked for me. Within the first four months, I was almost fully booked all the time. I cannot wait to hear that this is actually helping other people. And I hope I gave you some new insight and new perspective. If you found value in this video, please give it a giant thumbs up and consider subscribing. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.